And next we'll go on to the consent agenda items. And I'll ask Mr. Barker to address those. <coughs> Mayor and Council, item number four is to consider resolution number 151454, approving Trinity River Authority resolution authorizing the issuance, sale, and delivery of TRA Tarrant County Water Project revenue bonds. <clears throat> the TRA intends to pursue a debt refunding opportunity for TRA Series 2005 bonds. The refunding would result in a net present value savings of approximately 10% and would not increase the term of the original debt. TRA contract with the City of Euless requires approval by the Euless City Council for all TRA bond sales. Item number five is to consider award of the annual contract for the purchase of water meters and transponders and to authorize the City Manager to enter into an agreement with Atlas Utility Supply Company of Fort Worth to provide said equipment. Atlas Utility Supply Company is the sole source provider for Badger meters and transponders and meters and transponders are uh, set on all new water connections and replacements are done on an as needed basis. Item number six is to acknowledge the receipt of the comprehensive annual financial report for the fiscal year ending September 30th, 2014. And this is done in accordance with the requirements of the city of U.S. charter. And finally, item number seven is the approval of the city council minutes of the January 27th, 2015 regular meeting. Thank you, council, any comments or questions? Mayor, I would move approval. Thank you. The motion is made by Councilmember Sanford and seconded by Councilmember Price. Please cast your votes. <coughs> the motion passes. Item number eight is to consider authorizing the city manager to negotiate and execute an engineering design contract. I'll ask Mr. Barber. Yes, Mayor and Council, uh, this contract would be for phase two of the reclaimed water system extension, and it's a continuation of the city's reclaimed water utility system. The system expansion feasibility study was completed in 2012 and recommended breaking a uh, utility system project into six phases. This engineering design contract would encompass phase two of the project, including engineering design, operational control, surveying, and bid services. Phase two would extend the existing reclaimed water service along Bear Creek Parkway in a northerly direction, primarily within the existing right-of-way of Bear Creek Parkway to the intersection of Bear Creek Parkway and East Ash Lane. This is approximately 2,500 linear feet. Phase two would, reply, would provide reclaimed water to an additional five multifamily properties located along Harwood Road to Ash Lane, as well as the Brookside and Bear Creek development. Thank you, Council Richard Pleasure. Mayor, I move approval. The motion was made by Mayor Cody Manasel and seconded by Council Member Lyman. Please catch your votes. The motion passes. Item number nine is to consider site plan number 14 17, and Mr. Collins will talk about the site plan. Thank you very much, Mayor. The subject property is at 900 block of North Industrial on C2 zone property as indicated in the red hash marks this is just north of clinic drive the super value pharmacy is located immediately to the south the applicant miss singh is with us this evening is uh, here in the back row along with her consulting engineer and they would be available to respond to any specific questions that you might have they are proposing to build a building that would be used uh, to house not only their doctor's practice, but there would be some additional space that they would want to market for retail use. The square footage of the building that they would propose to construct is 10,730 square feet. You can see on the graphic on your left that there will be two points of ingress egress into the site. One will be off of Clinic Drive. They were able to negotiate with the property owner um, Clinic Drive is a private drive and in control of the folks that own the Super Value Pharmacy. They negotiated with them to establish mutual access between these two tracks. And another point of ingress egress would be off of Industrial Boulevard. Um, you can note, uh, in response to a question that was asked during the pre session, that the primary ingress egress off of North Industrial, it would contemplate that that would continue to extend on the north side east in order to serve the undeveloped portion of the vacant tract there. 
They will meet or exceed all of the landscaping that is required as part of this site development. Uh, they will concentrate a majority of their landscaping in order to enhance the 157 streetscape. And the last slide that we have would de depict the elevation and the various architectural design elements that will be incorporated into the construction of their facility. Thank you, Council. If there are no comments or questions, I'll entertain a motion. Move approval. Let's move north from the site that you were just considering for that development at the Glade Parks development on the west side of State Highway 121 as part of the Glade Parks development. That first drive approach as you're going southbound on the service road, you'll get to Loving Trail on the developed hard corner is the existing racing canes. Immediately adjacent to that to the north is a proposed development that would be a new location for Panera Bread. They would propose to construct a new store that's a little over 4,300 square feet. If you're familiar with the site, in order to access this property as you do with Racing Canes, there is a spine road that is located to the west of Racing Cane that you would travel north. You would continue going north on that spine road to access the Panera Bread as there will be no direct access off of the service road. Uh, the site plan meets all of the technical criteria that uh, the store will include a drive through. In the event that you get into the queue, there will be an opportunity for you uh, to exit before you get to the drive through order window. They will meet or exceed all of the landscaping requirements associated with the Glade Parks development. And lastly, you can see on this depiction of the elevation drawings that the intended purpose of the Glade Parks ordinance was to both establish a common masonry theme um, that would be carried out throughout the development while balancing the opportunity for the branding of the store. And you can see from this depiction that Panera Bread is clearly uh, marketing their brand um, and while they're also uh, meeting the masonry standards as indicated in the vision book that was approved as part of Glade Parks. David Bond is their consulting engineer and is here with us this evening and would be available to respond to any of your questions. Thank you. Council? <coughs> Mayor, I move approval. Thank you. Mayor, I'll second. Thank you. The motion is made by Council Member Tompkins and seconded by Mayor Pro Tim Please cast your votes. The motion passes. We've come to the time where it's time for our public comments. And I do have a request for a couple of folks to speak to us this evening. First, I will apologize because I will probably mispronounce your name. I believe it's Ms. Juan Valier. Very good. Thank you. If you come on up. And I'm going to have Mr. Olson give a few parameters about what the council can and can't respond to. Thank you, Mayor. As a reminder to the, the public and the council, because of the Open Meetings Act, uh, when we don't have a specific item posted on the agenda that states what the topic of discussion is, uh, you have the right to listen to the citizens present whatever concerns they want to the council, but the council is not allowed to discuss or deliberate that matter with the citizens. So uh, this is an opportunity to receive information, but unfortunately, uh, because of the limitations of the Open Meetings Act, we're not allowed to address it uh, by council members having a discussion in public about it. Um, so I just leave you with those parameters if there are any issues that come up that you need uh, assistance with. I'll be glad to help you with those. Thank you. If you could start by giving us, spelling your name and giving us your address. It's Bonnie Valiant, B A L Y E A T. It's 1007 Fayette Drive. Um, I wrote this out because this is my first time, and thank you for telling me the parameters. I'm not standing here waiting for a reply. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just read this since it is my first time. And 
I am very concerned about the traffic and the speed going down our residential street with no posted speed limit. Either way, coming or going on Bayette Drive. We have had a, we have a resident we have more than just one, but this particular one takes care of my dog while I'm gone at work during the day. She's over 80 years old and she has to cross the street several times a day. And I'm scared that she's gonna trip and fall trying to get past the traffic. And the speeding, it's just unbelievable. Um, I also like to walk my dog during the night and I've had to run across the Street for fear of the speeding traffic. Um, pulling in my driveway, I have had cars try to pass me on this residential street. Coming both ways, doesn't matter how I'm turning in, there's vehicles trying to pass you. They don't want to slip in. This street has had several accidents. It de uh, tees into Harwood. Um, there's been several accidents at this corner of Fayette Drive and Harwood. There's been accidents right almost in front of my house. Um, I've noticed the police have and started to patrol the, the street. But uh, by the time I go in and make a phone call, they're long gone. Um, I also, uh, we had the, the Linking speed sign uh, posted midway down Fayette Drive. And I have stood out there and watched the cars go super fast so they can see it flash red and blue. Um, I, I'm not going <coughs> to say any names or point out any homes, but I know that some of the people that live on Fayette Drive are some of the people that are speeding and they just don't care what happens from one end of the drive to the other. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Ms. Bellier. I saw Catherine Landry in the back taking some notes and he will get with you after the um, after the meeting and we do appreciate you coming in and expressing your concerns. Thank you. Our next request is from Mr. Darl Easton. Pass out some information first. As you know, I do look through the budget documents every once in a while. And I came across uh, these pages. I referenced one year's budget to the previous one. And I've complained or had issues with other documents before. Uh, <clears throat> on the letter, I think I've included that as an open records request, which I'm sure will be forwarded to the finance department. But if you just look on the first sheet, it should say exhibit one. And then if you just kind of open it up and fold it over and compare the 2003 budget numbers, I've highlighted it on there. In the first document, which was 2003-2004 budget, if you'll look at the personnel line, it has $383,000 and uh, put my glasses on. But anyway, then you look over at the following page, which is in the subsequent year document, which should reflect the exact same numbers, in my opinion, they're significantly less, over $160,000 less. Okay, that's on that sheet. If you go to the Exhibit 2, which is <clears throat> the same budget document, also dealing with the Golf Course Pro Shop, this time it's the next line, which is Operations, and you look at the 2013 budget on both documents and the operations number is significantly different. Now, are the budget numbers changing from one year to the next? I know you can't answer that, but that's the letter I'm asking through open records request. 
It just seems like they ought to be the same. One document's published. There's no uh, asterisk or agenda reference that, that they changed. Okay. So I'd like an answer on that. The second issue I have uh, is a follow-up to the town hall meeting. Uh, and I've done a letter for each of the city council members. And I'm asking for a response on this issue from you. First, I want to read it. I commend you and the city staff for the significant advancement in making more city information available on the city website. However, as was stated in the town hall meeting on January 22nd by Mr. John Sweeter, an audio for the pre-council work session should be made available as a companion to the pre-council presentation slides that are available on the website. Just tonight, we had a presentation from TRA. I bet you the fellow citizens went in and looked at the slides. They had no idea what was being presented, unless you have that audio to go along with it. So either, you know, and that's very valuable information, in my opinion, for your citizens to have access to. Our citizens, I guess, and yours too. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so I'm asking each one of you, I'd like a, a written response from each one of you. What is the resistance to having the audio taken during pre-council meeting and having it put on the website with the presentation? That's basically, uh, the, that letter in itself, I think is, is a low cost deal. Just about every iPad in there, iPhone has capability of recording the audio and it can be transitioned to the website very easily. The uh, second, uh, or third topic, I guess, I hope I'm still under five minutes. <laughs> anyway, recently you won the Platinum Award from the, uh, the Secretary of State for openness, and you put your check register online. But I've gone on there several times to review it, and I've also looked at the purchase card. I've been requested open record request and got a copy of purchase cards. Well, a purchase card is about the same as writing a check. And I think the purchase card data should be available online. That's over $65,000 a month on average that's being spent with the purchase card. You just look at the total numbers. And then third, on the check register that is online, there's almost uh, $22 million that is not itemized. Each check number is itemized, but you got electronic funds transfer over $3 million. And then you got wire ACH transfers over $19 million. Those are city transactions, expenditures, very similar to a check, but they're not available, itemized on, on the website. That concludes, uh, I'd also, if you would care to comment on that in a letter, that would be fine too. Thank you for your time and appreciate all you do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Easton. City staff will look at the budget numbers and get back to you. Are there any other folks that would like to make public comments? Thank you. It's now time to move on to reports. Mr. City Attorney. Thank you. City Manager. Well, Mayor, I would just like to say that our finance department does an incredible job. They um, have a very, very low number of staff people. Uh, they just have completed this audit, and I just want to compliment uh, Jackie and Janina and their staff for all of the nights and weekends that they spent to get this out and get this done for the citizens with uh, a very low number of folks over there. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you. Council, any reports? Mayor, I would like to uh, announce the winners of fire department awards from the banquet the other night. Our Rookie of the Year, Firefighter Paramedic Ryan Van Oy. The Wayne Britt Award, the Firefighter Paramedic Cody Hughes. The EMS Provider of the Year is Firefighter 2 Paramedic Josh Williams. Driver Engineer of the Year is Driver Engineer Paramedic Chris Sutterfield. The Supervisor of the Year, Lieutenant Paramedic Lance Judd. Our Employee of the Year is Lieutenant Paramedic Tommy Rush, and the Distinguished Unit Awards went to Cody Skinner, Michael Van Pelt, Ashley Howard, Kyle McNeese, David Johnson, Lance Judd, Chris Williamson, Ken Kelly, and Cliff Moore, all well-deserved awards. 
And Mayor, I'd like to add one other little thing on a different note. I'd like to welcome Vicki Baum back as evidence that community prayers and an indomitable spirit will always win out. Welcome back. We've had lots of wonderful things to celebrate this evening, but we have one more. I would like to congratulate Ms. Kim Setter, who very recently completed her required professional education for recertification as the Texas Registered Municipal Court. Kim was awarded her certificate on January 22nd, 2015. As an officer of the city, Kim makes every professional and personal effort to keep up to date in her legal and administrative duties. Achieving recertification confirms her commitment to our city. Kim, congratulations, and would you like, I know it's a very rigorous process, would you like to kind of give us an overview of what you had to do to get to be recertified? The recertification process for Texas Registered Municipal Clerks is a program administered um, on campus of the University of North Texas. Recertification requires you to attend uh, six educational seminars and also complete um, course study um, amounting to a 60 point average. So uh, those are book reports, those are attending um, different types of courses, doing homework as well. So it, it, in, in doing all of that and also maintaining officer duties within the Texas Municipal Clerks Association. Congratulations. <laughs> Valentine's Day is going to prove a very, very busy time for all of us in the city. I'm going to do a quick rundown of some of the events so that you can go on the website and get details for whatever you'd like to attend. On February 13th is the Daddy-Daughter Valentine's Day Dance. Captain Landers, I'm sure, will be attending that. On August, uh, excuse me, February 14th, we have the Mother-Son Brunch. Another very important event on the 14th is Heritage Park Museum will be open from 1 to 5 with tours of the museum and all the grounds. But especially important, at 1.30 in the afternoon, we will have an, uh, the unveiling of the new mural for the museum. Believe it or not, this is a 22 by 7 foot canvas that is mounted and will be unveiled for the very first time Saturday afternoon at 1.30. We hope to see you there. And lastly, Raven's Grill still has dinner available. If you need to take your sweetie to a really great dinner, call Raven's Grill. They'll be glad to make arrangements for you. And lastly, our next meeting is February 24th. Hope to see you all there. Happy Valentine's Day and have a safe evening. The meeting is adjourned.